A reading from the prophet Joel. Now, now, it is the Lord who speaks. Come back to me with all your heart, fasting, weeping, mourning. Let your hearts be broken, not your garments torn. Turn to the Lord your God again, for he is all tenderness and compassion. Slow to anger, rich in graciousness, and ready to relent. Who knows if he will not turn again, will not relent, will not leave a blessing as he passes, oblation and libation for the Lord your God. Sound the trumpet in Zion, order a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly, call the people together, summon the community, assemble the elders, gather the children, even the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his bedroom and the bride her alcove. Between vestibule and altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, lament. Let them say, spare your people, Lord. Do not make your heritage a thing of shame, a byword for the nations. Why should it be said among the nations? Where is their God? Then the Lord, jealous on behalf of his land, took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say the responsorial psalm together. Have, have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offense. O wash me more and more from my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. My offense is truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, Lord, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight, our God? If you had created for me, O God, put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Give me again the joy of your help, for the spirit of favor sustain me. O God, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We are ambassadors for Christ. It is as though God were appealing through us, and the appeal that we make in Christ's name is, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made the sinless one into sin, so that in him we might become the goodness of God. As his fellow workers, we beg you once again not to neglect the grace of God that you have received. For he says, at the favourable time, I have listened to you. On the day of salvation, I came to your help. Well, now is the favourable time. This is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand to greet the gospel. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. A pure heart to create for me, O God, and give me again the joy of your help. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Be careful not to parade your good deeds before men to attract their notice. By doing this, you will lose all reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give alms, do not have it trumpeted before you. This is what the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win men's admiration. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you give alms, your left hand must not know what your right is doing. 
Your alms giving must be in secret, and your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not imitate the hypocrites. They love to say their prayers, standing up in the synagogues and at the street corners for people to see them. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you pray, go to your private room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in that secret place, and your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. When you fast, do not put on a gloomy look as the hypocrites do. They pull long faces to let men know they are fasting. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you fast, put on oil on your face and wash your face so that no one will know you are fasting except your Father who sees all that is done in secret. Your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. Fasting has an ancient tradition in the Christian church. In the Didache, a Christian text from the second century, it is reported that while Jews kept private fasts on Mondays and Tuesdays, Christians did so on Wednesdays and Fridays in memory of the Passion of Christ. For both religions, Christian and Jewish, the practice of fasting was understood as a way of humbling themselves before God and strengthening their prayer. Rabbinic literature also linked fasting with alms giving, and early Jewish writing from the same period stated that the merit of a fast is in proportion to the charity dispensed. We do not fast in order to save food or money, which we can use later for ourselves. There is no merit in that. If we fast so that we can save something to give away to the poor, that is meritorious. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving are signs of our desire to convert to God. In the first reading, the prophet tells the people to turn back to God. The Catechism of the Catholic Church helps us to understand these spiritual disciplines. Through their practice, we can express conversion in relation to ourselves, to God, and to others. Alongside these, the Catechism mentions efforts at reconciliation with one's neighbor, tears of repentance, concern for the salvation of one's neighbor, the intercession of the saints, and the practice of charity, which covers over a multitude of sins. Our culture is obsessed with food, and so many TV shows and podcasts are about cooking and eating. Our desire for new eating fats is powerful. The idea of fasting is unlikely to appeal, whereas the idea of dieting has much attraction today. Nevertheless, it is good for us to know the bite of hunger, which is the taste of poverty. It gives us the perspective and solidarity with those who have no food, not through choice, but by chance. It could happen to any of us. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the ashes which mark the sign of the cross on our foreheads are made by the burning of the palm from previous year's Palm Sunday. The ashes remind us of our mortality. They are signs of repentance, of seeking forgiveness. They are a bold public testimony that we recognize that we are sinners and beggars before God. We pray that God will have mercy on us as we repent and believe the good news.
Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. O God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who are marked with these ashes, that as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So the two of us will stand here now and invite the people to come forward for the ashes. And they will say, repent and believe the gospel. And you answer, Amen. Repent and believe the gospel. Amen.
the bidding prayers, please. Let us present our needs to God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in love. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he may know the guidance and strength of the Holy Spirit as he continues to discern God's will for us and for our world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the Church, that she may be an ambassador for Christ by announcing the good news of reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all present here today, that we may have the will to change our lives and the lives of others by our charity, good example, and prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who are estranged, that they may seek to be reconciled to all those with whom they are in dispute. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who are sick or suffering in any way, that they may know the presence and comfort of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For ourselves, that this Lenten season will prepare us for our Passover from death to newness of life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us take a moment to pray in silence for our own intentions. May we also ask Mary, our Mother of God, to intercede on our behalf with her blessed Son. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy Lord Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in this now, by the hour of our dead. Amen. Heavenly Father, have mercy on your church in all its need. As we turn away from sin, may we turn to you in repentance and embrace your holiness with all our heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleanse from our sins may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most holy, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread, and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and granted by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your spirit, grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis our Pope, Mark our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times, by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph as spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us to stay out daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a gesture of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
tomorrow morning we will not have mass. The priests are having a Lenten recollection at crew. It starts at 10. So we will have word and communion here in church. No, no mass. There will be no priests around. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, the Mass is ended.